Welcome to the 2013 KPU coverage of the Blueberry Festival, a huge tradition in Ketchikan. I'm right here with Kathleen Light, the Executive Director of the Ketchikan Area Arts and Humanities Council. Woo, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so we are at the start of the whole big deal. What's going to happen this weekend? And you've got something new going on at the Main Street Gallery tomorrow. We do. Uh, we're at the start. We're at the Pet and Doll Parade that starts off the 38th Annual Blueberry Arts Festival. It's going to be the whole weekend long. Um, everything happens tomorrow. We have Giggle Feet Dance Festival tonight and Sunday. Um, and one of our new events is tomorrow from 1 to 3. It's Ketchikan Underwater, a community art project. Oh, nice. Now, what's going to happen at that? We're going to make art. And uh, we're inviting the entire community to come down, contribute a little bit of their artistic talent or not. If you don't have any, it's OK. Come and do it anyway. Um, and that is then going to be uh, framed and then we're going to hang it off the edge of the railing of the Main Street Gallery. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we couldn't have better weather as usual. It's been, I think, pretty sunny for the last couple of years. Yeah. Might make for a little bit of a slow slug race, <laughs> you think? Absolutely. <laughs> It'll be slow. We'll have to spritz them. And maybe a little faster pie eating. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, happy blueberry to you. Thank you. We have about 10 minutes to go before we get started. So just go ahead and make yourselves comfortable, and uh, we'll we'll get back to you in about ten minutes. Where are these kids from? We are from the Ketchikan Peace Health Medical Center Daycare. So we're the Peace Health Child Development Center. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Is this the first pet and doll parade that you've been in? Yes. Yes. How about you? Yes. Yes. And what made you choose your costume? Um, Batman. Yeah? So why, why did you choose Batman? Because I like Batman. <laughs> How about this young lady over here? You're looking very pink. Is this your first parade? And tell me a little bit about your costume. Um, I like it and it's pink. <laughs> Very cool. Well, have fun, guys. You guys get to go on the fire truck and have juice and all sorts of goodies down at the fire station. So happy blueberry. I, I got to ask, though, you're, you're looking very blueberry today. What what prompted the costume? Huh? What, what made you think up this cool costume? Well, I got blue pants for blueberries. I got the blueberry shirt, and I have my blueberry glasses. So he might just get the Spirit Award for the Pet and Doll Parade as being the most blueberry boy around. Here, wait. All right, guys, we got to know, is this is this your first parade that you've ever done? No, this is the second. Mm, yeah. Okay, so tell me about, you know, what, what, what are you dressed up as? And you've got your dolls with you. I'm Belle. You're Belle. Oh, very cool. Very cool. How about you? Mario. Nice. Do you play a lot of video games? Yeah. <laughs> Shocker there. <laughs> this is too cool. Hi! <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I have a new parade friend. Yeah. He's yours. He's yours now. Oh, okay. Come on, let's go. Yeah, come on over. Tell me about your dog. Yeah, he's a great dog. <laughs> He's oh. yours now. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's his name? His name's Toby. And how old is he? Oh, he's so cool. Oh, he's about six or seven, I think. He was a surrender dog. We've had him for a couple years. Oh, oh very cool. Yeah, he didn't bark for the whole first month that we had him. We didn't think that he barked at all. And, and now he does a yeah, lot. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, he gets really excited. And you brought your daughter with you. Is this uh -huh. her first parade? This is her first parade. Yeah, this she's is Juniper. Her. She's, she's going to take my oh, talk. Yeah. I'm reaching for the microphone. <laughs> um, I'm going to eat it. We've got the most colorful bunch of the parade right here. Tell me a little bit about these kids. Um, this is Palmer Daycare, um, and uh, these are our kids. Very cool. It's Gina Palmer. Nice. Oh, look, she's a big blueberry. Blueberry. We need to talk to the person with the most festive hat around, right? <laughs> so, good. what what possessed you to make this? Well, this was a part of someone else's wearable art piece from last year. Oh, sweet. And it matched our Ava's bubble bath. 
so that's why we're wearing it. Oh, that's neat. All right, so that is that is a bubble bath. I love it. Very, very creative. Thank you. And the traditional beginning of the pet and doll parade. At first glance, you might think that the banner has taken a beating, but in reality, it's so the wind can blow through it. There you have it, the start of the Blueberry Pet and Doll Parade celebrating Catch Cans Kids and sponsored by Community Connections. Always a favorite start to the Blueberry festivities. This year's Blueberry Festival is going to prove to be outstanding. Lots of costumes this year. More costumes than pets, I might say. And lots of kids. Great to see the younger kids out. Remember, only KPU covers all of the events in and around Ketchikan. You can watch this right now on KPU, or you can watch it later on our free video on demand. And lots of crowds. I can only imagine what's going through the minds of the tourists right now. I see all the uh, tourists are lining the streets watching this Ketchikan tradition, the Blueberry Festival Pet and Doll Parade. I'd estimate this crowd to be right around 200 people, give or take a few. Now this is really cool. This is awesome. How did you get the tutu on the dog? It's elastic. It does wonders. It's like duct tape, but... What's <laughs> I love it. How you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> We've got the, the miserable twins coming at us. <laughs> lots and lots of people right here, downtown Ketchikan. Now there's a big change to this year's parade. Typically, it has gone to the library. This year, the parade will end at the brand new fire station. They will be bringing out a truck and we'll be having snacks and goodies right there at the new fire station. And here comes the banner signaling the tail end of the parade. And I'm not quite sure what's up with this dog, but he's got wings. Let's go check it out. He's a dragon. Wait, he's a dragon and we have Knight Judah here. <laughs> Knight Judah just took a spill. So Lots of crowds lining the street here for the start of these blueberry festivities. Remember, only KPU covers all of the events in and around Ketchikan just for you. What a cutie! All of the pets and dolls right in his wheelbarrow. And here comes the original blueberry. Say hi. 
So how did you how did you like the parade? He's an unwilling interviewee. <laughs> nice costume. What, what, what is it? It's a corn cob. <laughs> it's he's a corn dog. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> So this is really cool. This is a brand new location for the ending of the parade. And uh, did you get informed that you'd be doing this? Or I have a feeling you guys probably volunteered it up. Well, we kind of volunteered it up. Kathleen Light is uh, one of our big community sponsors here. We always want to be part of the community anytime we can help like this. So brand new fire station. It's a fitting place to have the end of the pet and doll parade. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know what? I might add a lot more space than the old library. Yeah, a lot more. Definitely, and you couldn't ask for better weather. So thanks, awesome spread. Who thought of the juice boxes? Uh, actually, this is on behalf of Wells Fargo Bank. Oh, sweet. Here. So they stepped up to the to the plate and jumped in. One of our volunteers, Tiffany Cook, made that happen. Very nice, very nice. Well, thank you. And you take the picture up to the front, they'll give you a package. Mixed mouth. Say hi, Fiber. All right, so what's going on here? Hi, we're taking pictures for the Ketchikan Passport, oh, nice. um, which is a passport for kids um, ages five and under. It just has a list of all the fun places to go in Ketchikan, and each time you go to one of those places, you get a stamp, and then at, at the end of the month, you take that to the library. They count up your stamps, you get entered that many times into a raffle, and you get a $50 gift certificate at Silly Munchkins. Oh, sweet! If That's very cool. <laughs> Wait, is there an age limit? Can I participate? Yeah, you have to be five or under. Oh, darn, <laughs> darn. I wanted to interview you because I think ever since I moved to Ketchikan, you've been to every single one of these. Yes, I have been, probably because Teresa has a daycare. Well, tell me tell me this. Over the years, what's changed about this? Just the route, because we used to, where did we used to end up at? We used to end the up. The old library. The old library, yeah. And there's right, no right. library. That's what Teresa said. Where are we going this year? There's no library there. Okay, so this is bluebird weather that we have right now. Right. Tell me about the worst weather you've ever had for one of these. I don't think we've had pouring down rain for any of them. Oh, nice. I don't I remember the any of them that we've had pouring down rain. If it is, it was just like another day in Ketchikan. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. This is my grandson, Corey, and this is my granddaughter, Kelsey. You say hi. And this is one of Teresa's day charges, Emma, from daycare. Very cool. So because Teresa has a daycare, I get to do this every year, walk down the street and push a buggy or hold a hand. Nice, nice. So Very it's cool. Great, it's great function. It's fun. And the tourists, I think, really like it, too. I think they do, too. I think they do. Well, thanks. Thank you. I think you could probably almost ride that dog through the parade route. I could almost ride that dog through the parade route. Okay, so you are not from Ketchikan. We're not from Ketchikan. In town for the day on a cruise ship, I assume. No, we're oh, not. Wow. Okay, so where are you from? Uh, we're from. I'm from North Carolina. Oh, My nice. husband also. Very nice. Where in North Carolina? Um, Edenton, North Carolina. Yep. No, exactly. So this must be your first pet and doll parade. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? It was great. It was wonderful. I love the dogs and the dolls too. So the most unusual thing that you saw in the parade would be what? 
the blueberry blueberry girl. The baby blueberry? Baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she was adorable. She was adorable. Awesome. It was. Oh yeah. So continuing on with our Blueberry Festival coverage right here on Friday at the Main Street Gallery is the delicious, the ever uber delicious Blueberry Recipe Contest. Now we are 15 minutes before the deadline for recipes to be entered and so far we've got 16 entries. Last year, if I think I recall correctly, there were about maybe 26, but let's do a quick rundown on what we've got on this long table so far. We've got a blueberry cream cheese coffee cake, an old fashioned blueberry cheesecake, blueberry sour dough, cream cheese, walnut, whoa, blueberry sourdough bread pudding, and in comes another recipe right now, best blueberry ricotta cake ever, blueberry tarties tarts, blueberry turnovers, blueberry pancake cupcakes, blueberry chutney, Graham's fresh blueberry pie, another blueberry pie, Blue bottom, or black bottom creme brulee. Ooh, that sounds yummy. Blueberry tea bread with lemon gaze, blueberry bars, blueberry baklava, and mousse of blueberry sponge cake. This is sounding really good. And we just had another one walk in the door making 17 entries into the blueberry contest this year. Now here's the rundown on the prizes. First prize is gonna get $50 gift certificate to Simply Bella, two tickets to a performance in November from the Arts Council, a Blueberry Arts Festival t-shirt. Second prize gets $50 Tatsuda's gift certificate and a Blueberry Arts Festival t-shirt, of course. And third prize gets two wearable arts matinee tickets and a Blueberry Arts Festival t-shirt. Now, there's also a People's Choice Award for when the gallery opens at five o'clock tonight, and that person will get a Blueberry Arts Festival t-shirt as well. So, it looks like they're taking the food out for the judges to begin judging here very shortly. Looks like we have three judges and we will not name those judges because they like to uh, kind of maintain their anonymity. Oh, and here comes recipe number 18 walking in the door. And what did you bring? I brought some blueberry arugula. Oh, what's that? It's uh, like a Jewish cookie that has, it's like a, it has um, cream cheese and butter. Ooh. dough and then it's like a pastry and has just layered with this one has blueberries and pecans and chocolate oh very nice very nice well good luck <laughs> best darn blueberry ricotta cake ever <laughs> trying to lobby the judges yeah, right. right from the get-go okay so we caught you for the second year in a row which is super cool and look at the look on your face like <laughs> oh god it had to be me again it had to be me but no seriously because you got, what did you do last year? What was your last recipe? Last year I made uh, blueberry tarts with uh, a blueberry pudding in them. And those are really, really good. And so this year you've got something entirely different. Yeah. What made you choose this year's recipe? I wanted to do something different and this is a recipe I've made before and I really liked it. So. Okay, yeah. so tell me a little bit about the recipe. Um, it, um, say on one to five, the complicated level. Five being the hardest. I would say it's Maybe a three or four, I guess it depends on what level of baking someone's at. And how long does it, how long does it take to make this? Um, prep, I think, was about 30 minutes and then it bakes for around 40 minutes. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Yeah. So it, does it have a um, more of a, a really sweet taste or is it more of a savory? It's sweet, yeah. It's a coffee cake, so. Okay, and let's, let's just by looking at it, I think I can estimate about 800 calories per slice. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for letting us pull you aside again for the second yeah. year in a row. That was really cool. Um, she's going to be hiding next year, just so you all know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're late. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you. So, Sarah, awesome. We see the Top Chef finalists walking in the door with? I made gluten-free blueberry crisps. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so is this something that you make a lot or? Yes, a lot. My husband's favorite dessert. <laughs> and were you going to change it up a little bit for Blueberry Festival or what's up with that? I was. I had some really nice uh, fresh peaches and he said absolutely not. So I needed to keep it the same. <laughs> that's awesome. Now tell me, I, I've got to ask because your theme last year in Top Chef was all about your daughter. Yes. Is this something that is good for her diet? Is that why you make it regularly in your house? It's actually something that we just tried for many health reasons. And and we're trying it on her, so oh, yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Well, welcome. Good luck. And we hope to see you back at Top Chef this year. All right. Thanks. Just out of the oh, well guaranteed. Oh, what you doing? <laughs> to burn your tongue. Kathleen can help you. Uh, we'll take out the last. Yeah. <laughs> or first. 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 Or
another recipe. Come on in. Okay, so give us the scoop on how these things are judged. You've got three judges this we year, have right? Three judges, and of course, it's the best blueberry dish contest. So whatever way they want to use blueberries. Last year we had that divine blueberry marinated salmon, which was over the top. Mm -hmm. um, so we certainly encourage creativity, being at the Arts Council here. Um, the judges have a big job ahead of them because there are a lot of luscious uh, blueberry dishes. Um, lots of pies, all sorts of things. So what they're going to look at is use of blueberry, and then just they can talk What's amongst their themselves. Favorite, right? Exactly what stands out. All right, um, which is a hard job. That's that's sugar shock right there. Yep. Yeah, I remember that from judging. Exactly. So I tell you what, we're this year we are not going to say who the judges are, so they can maintain their kind of anonymity. That's right. You know, we don't want to reveal them. Exactly, no bribing. But this is great. So so far, it looks like we've got about 19 entries. Exactly. And we got about five minutes so there's usually the, uh, the uh, rush, back, rush in the door <laughs> exactly um, then folks are able to enjoy everybody's able to enjoy these pieces at the art opening from five to seven exactly so the judges will choose their favorites and we've got some great prizes from simply bella and um, tatsudas There's some awesome artwork. Now, my first question was, because I, there I see some from youth. Right. I see some from Catch Can's well-known artists. Absolutely. How do people get their piece of art on the wall for Blueberry? This is an open call show. It's one of the only for the entire season. And so this is a great opportunity. It's Dennis, it's your neighbors, it's your friends. Everyone is welcome to put up to two pieces of art. Um, I'm always surprised of who, who brings pieces in. I'm like, I didn't know you were an artist. And so this is a great opportunity for them to share that artwork. 
Um, we've got some great prizes. The I got like my cheat sheet. People's here. Choice, right? Yes. People's Choice actually is. Well, actually, we with the People's Choice we do a blueberry T-shirt. Okay. That's going to be premium because we're almost sold out already. Mm. Um, first prize is $150 with cash and a $100 gift certificate to Tongas Business. Oh, nice! And they've got good art supplies great over there. Art supplies, exactly. Second prize is $125 and a $75 gift certificate to Starboard Frames and Gifts. So they can frame next year's piece and bring it. Exactly, exactly. And then $100 cash and a $50 gift certificate to the point for third place. Oh, very so cool. Great cash prizes. And just, you know, we've had several people uh, taking sneak peeks already before the reception. And I keep hearing the, I didn't know they were an artist, which That's is always neat. the funnest part about this show. And it's That's such great. an eclectic um, mix. So one of my favorites of the year. Well, enjoy. This is fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks. Another monumental happening on this Blueberry Weekend is the reface or redecorating, if you will, of what's soon to be the new Ketchikan Performing Arts Center. Currently, it is the home of First City Players. And based on paint donations, donations of equipment, and lots and lots of volunteers, they have nearly completed this major facelift of the new Performing Arts Center. And I know they were hoping to get it done this weekend. Uh, tens of volunteers have diligently worked many, many hours on this and they are still working, but I think they're gonna shut it down for Blueberry Arts Festival and complete the job right after, but it is certainly looking great. The race will begin in five minutes. So five day walkers and the one mile for the kids will begin in five minutes right over there.
Welcome to KPU's continued coverage of the Blueberry Festival 2013. Now we're right here in front of the police department. The Kids Fun Run just took place and you're about ready to watch the Adults 5K and 10K. It's actually a really exciting race. It's going to take them south of town and then back in town and it's highly competitive. We've observed a bunch of people already warming up uh, behind the uh, starting line and uh, so this is going to go off around 930 and next up we've got the slug race. Okay, so why is your number red? Did you just finish the race? No, I'm about to do the 5K run. Okay, and where, where is that course? Do you know where that is? Coming in. Oh, we have runners coming in. Um, the move. course more, more is guys coming in. up Grant Street, take a right down Bodden, around Park Avenue, Woodland, out a little past the Coast Guard base, and then back in and up the hill. Okay, so yeah. did you like have hard training for this, or do you do this regularly? No, usually if I get in a good run once a week, I'm happy. All so. right, all right, so what, what's your goal time? Between a nine and a ten minute mile. Okay. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not really a runner. Not Olympic speed, right? Not Olympic speed, more for fun and exercise. All right, so. cool, have fun. Yeah, thank you. And as you can see with the uh, little guys coming up the hill here, the littlest of tots have participated in this, which is very, very cool. Nice to see the crowd cheering them on. He's like, whoops, I want to stop short about 10 feet of the finish line. K and 10K getting ready to start. Runners are gearing up. Looks like a large crowd this year. See a couple familiar faces in there. Scott Brian Erickson, George Pasley, Mayor Bob, and a bunch of young folks too. Pretty simple race he's explaining right now. The 10K is going to take the runners all the way past the South Tonga service station. Timers are ready.
And we see Team Ezzy out here in force. If you'll remember, the Harneys participated in Top Chef last year. They've all got their t-shirts on. Okay, so, so what's your name? Tristan. And how old are you? Four. You're four and you ran a whole mile? Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah. Was it harder or easier than you thought? Other. Harder. Harder? And did you have to practice a lot before you did the run? Yeah. Or do you just run around a whole lot anyway? I just run around a whole lot anyway. Well, good job, buddy. That's awesome that you finished and have a great blueberry festival. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we're right here at the weigh-in section for the slug race, and it is always sponsored by Fish and Game. And I've got to admit, they gave me this handy-dandy little handout here, and uh, there's a larger one up here on the wall. I don't know about you watching this at home, but I just don't think about slugs that much to think about all these different pieces and parts. However, there is some other interesting information right over here about how long they live. They live from one to six years. I think less than one because I'm frequently stepping on them. And they can vary in size. Now last year at the race, there were some ginormous slugs. I'm really curious with this year's heat as to whether or not people are gonna be able to bring in big ones or little ones. Now we've got an overcast morning right here for Blueberry Festival, which means the slugs might run a little faster than normal, but we're never sure. So they've got all this great information and you can see right down here, all of the different types of slugs. Lord knows I've got enough of these in my backyard, but we always see a bunch of the white ones uh, brought in. And last year we saw some of the spotted ones as well. So let's check in over at the slug weigh-in as kids are checking in their slugs and there's always a big crowd, so stay tuned. We've got some weigh-ins right now. Right. Who do you have in there? Tell them the names. Tell them we didn't name them. Come up with a name real quick. Anonymous, anonymous racers. Bob the slug. Bob the slug. Bob the slug. Bob the slug. Take your slug and put it on here. We'll weigh it really fast. Here. Who's on your shirt there? Who's on there? So you guys need to put him on there. I don't want to touch any of this. <laughs> and he's in. Graham. What's your name? Say it louder. Eli. Eli. And you don't have a slug name? I know. What's your favorite Ninja Turtle? What's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Nobody knows that name. William is good. He's super shy. Okay. Hey, you want to grab your name? <laughs> Yeah. Huh? Okay, did you come up with a name? What? I'm just going to call it Eli. Can I call Sparks? him Eli okay, Slug? Okay, what the name is. What's your slug's name? Sports. Sports. Okay. Hey, let's see how big Sport comes in. Oh, no, 20. Tw oh. Up. Yeah, we're not sure. 18 or 20. Oh, he's moving around. That's the reason why. We can go with 20. He's looking pretty active down there. We'll go with 20. And that comes in at the fattest slug so far. Sport checks in at 20 grams. What's your, what's your name? What's Sport's racer? Braden? Braden. B-A-Y-D-E-M. All right. There we go. Good luck. Are you guys ready? 20? 20 slugs right there. 20 slugs. Wow, and a whole crate of slugs coming in now. Put Pretty cool. Okay, so put him on there. What's your slug say? Yeah, okay, I'm like, I'm sluggy. Sluggy, okay. Comes in. Sluggy is 8 grams. All right. What's, What's your, your name? name? Casey. I'm Casey. Casey. Okay, you can get your slug again. Ew. What's your slug's name? S-E-Y. Ew, 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 ew. Get the dog. Um. What's your slug's name? Speedy. Speedy. Okay, Speedy. And what's your name? Jack. 15 grams. Speedy and Jack. Okay. Jake, where's your slug? Whoa. Oh, he's leaking a little. Oh, my goodness. We've got a slug foul going on. He's leaking. <laughs> what's your slug's name? William. William. What's your name? Jake. Jacob. Okay, William comes in at 24. Wow. So the, the million dollar question of the day is in previous races, has it been the heaviest slug or the lightest slug that has won? 
It hasn't made a difference. It's um, different every year. So I think it's whoever's awake the most. <laughs> so here's here's my other question. Who dreamt up the slug race? Um, I don't know. Boyd has been doing it for 12 years, but he wasn't able to do it this year, so we're here. All right, another slug checking in. Get on down there. 16 grams. What's your slug's name? Deuce. Deuce. Okay, and what's your name? <coughs> Maddie. All right, Deuce is 16 grams. C-E. Oh. Yeah. C-E. C-E. That'll work. For Deuce. And Maddie is her name. Yeah, Maddie. <laughs> okay, go ahead and get Deuce. Okay, come here, Deuce. Look. Close up of Deuce. Do you have one, too? <laughs> Getting close-up shots for Facebook of Deuce. He's well on his way to fame. Clint. Clint. Okay. Clint is 18 grams. And what's your name? Tyler. Tyler. Another very carefully wrapped slug and looking like a very tired owner. My rat took it out of him. I see. What's your slug's name, Bruce? Rich Froning. Rich Froning? Rich Froning. What's the backstory on the name? F R O. Oh my it's, it's god. The, oh it's, my the, god. The, it's the world's fittest slug. From the world's okay. fittest family. Yeah. All right. Did you find? Yes. Where did Where did you find your slug? Where did we find the slug, Bruce? In the woods. In the woods. Oh, by your Very house. cool. No, he said on the porch. <laughs> on the porch. <laughs> we've been, we've been we feeding him for a month. <laughs> He's ginormous. Monster. monster slug. Oh man, you guys did good. Oh, oh the big bad slug of them all checks in. Rich Froney cruises, slug is weighing 40 grams there. Huge. Oh, look at this one. Now we've got the world's longest slug checking in. What's your slug's name? Your slug's name, Max? It's Max Jr. Okay, we'll call him Jr. 32 grams. Another ginormous slug. I gotta know how many inches long that thing is. Where'd you guys find him? What's your slug's name? Max Jr. Where'd you find him? In the woods. In the wood, it's like fishing. You can't, you can't divulge where you found it, right? <laughs> We've just checked in at the slug way, and now we need to run back to the finish line because those 5K runners, if they're not already coming in, they will be soon. Dang, nice job. So a little bird told me that you would be coming in first. We've got uh, another runner coming in. Now, you run a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, quite a bit. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how you got started in running. I um, actually got started here in Ketchikan, born and raised. Uh, I guess it started in freshman year of high school. I was family friends with Mr. Ortez, and he just got me into it. Okay, so was it an easy run today? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't say easy, but uh, it wasn't super hard. It was, I mean, it was tough. So why did you choose the 5K over the 10? Um, I was originally going to, uh, pace some of the high scores and then uh, the situation changed and so I just started running by myself. All right, sweet. Okay, well congratulations and good job. You. For these two, they're really duking it out, coming up the hill and good job. And wow, that was a close finish for those two. You guys are out of race. What was the deal with the, uh, the dueling at the end there? Uh, he was pacing, I was following. Waited until the last second to just capitalize. But he was pushing me hard. It was a good race. I liked it. <laughs> Helped me, you know. I just ran a PR. So. You just did a personal record? Yeah. Awesome. So it's, I uh, started running my freshman year. I've dropped about 10 minutes. So, pretty crazy. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, and you are not from Ketchikan. What brought you to Ketchikan? Um, I'm working in the Cedars Lodge this summer. Um, and I just, I ran cross country for four years in high school. I just graduated and I haven't raced for a while. So I decided to come out and, and uh, test my, my running against the locals. But <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, you clearly did. You clearly did. So how was the course today? Did, was it a little harder than you thought? I know it's the same as always, but uh, what did you think? Uh, the course was good. I think uh, a couple of parts, I kind of slowed down onto the people way in front of me, people way behind me, I didn't have anybody hang with me. Um, 
next time probably go a little bit faster in the beginning, stay a little bit faster, maybe slow down. But the course was really nice. I love how it challenges you because you got the big hill right in the beginning and the big hill right in the end. So it really burns your cast and makes you feel good afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Well, very cool. Congratulations, guys. Right, thank, thank you. you. A lot of runners coming in right now. As predicted, this race has gone very, very quickly. We'll see the 10K folks coming in probably in another 10 or 15 minutes. Back at Slug Central, we've got big breaking news happening right now. <laughs> Hunter Davis and Boyd Porter are no longer, they were not able to be here this year. So we have two brand new judges, Stuart White, KJ. Everyone knows these guys. Are you a little nervous? Yes, I wouldn't be lying if I said no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so did they give you the rundown on the rules? Not really. <laughs> oh no, I think we're all in trouble then. We'll figure it out, I'll figure it out though. <laughs> okay, so the rule is that the first part of the slug that goes outside the blue circle is the winner. So how are you gonna keep an eye on all three tables at the same time, guys? Uh, try to be taller than the rest of the crowd, so <laughs> look over and see what's happening. Well, you've probably been to the slug race before, right? Yeah. It is slam jam packed all around the table, so you kind of have to get up on your tippy toes. And then after that, you guys are up to judge the pie eating contest, which is another kind of wild one. Now, we were talking a little off camera, and you have participated in the pie eating contest, right? Right, right. I've done the participated before. And I lost, <laughs> and that's okay. Okay, and, and wait, you're like the judge with the mostest today because you're also doing the beard and mustache contest. I know, they wrote me in at the last minute like, oh, we really need someone for that. Come on, it's a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Did you grow this little bit overnight? Yeah, is that how that works? I wish, this is like a month or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, good luck, guys. I think the crowds are descending upon us as we speak. Now, here are the winners of the uh, 2013, we are in 2013, slug weigh-in. In third place at 36 grams, we have Jeffrey the Slug. <laughs> Clancy and Declan, are you out here? Come on over, we have a prize for you. Excellent. Excellent. In second place, at 40 grams, we have Rich Franny the Slug. And in first place, weighing in at 42 grams, we have Streak the Slug. Izzy and Sam, are you out here? All right, our first place And now we invite you all to come and participate in the slug race competition. So here's the rules. When we say go, you're gonna put your sl slug on the table. And then your slugs are gonna have to race to the outside of the blueberry. The first slug on the outside of the blueberry is the winner. The winners from this heat then race again in the grand finale race. Okay, so get ready. What we're gonna do is every slug is gonna go inside the smallest circle. Ready, put your slugs inside the smallest circle. Face your slugs out so they know which direction they're going. Yeah. Inside the smallest circle. Watch. Keep your Watch. eyes on your slug. Make sure you Do know not lose are. sight of your own slug. Ready? Go slugs, go! All right, we've got a tight race already right here at slug table number one. Go, 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 and some very lively slugs here at table number one. Go! Go, Steve! 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 Go, Ste
And it looks like the white ones are out to an early lead. Yeah, they are. And they're quite lively because it is not hot and sunny like it has been in years past. No touching is allowed, but you can cheer the loudest. The slugs are looking somewhat dazed and confused at this point. A couple of huddled up like turtles. Come on, Steve! Oh, don't look at them! Come over here! One's making a full U-turn, going right back in the circle. And suddenly the brown ones are waking up. This could be a tight race, folks. You never know. Our slug is turning around. He's playing with the other slugs. Come on, Steve, turn around. Turn around, Steve. Come on, Steve. And on the far side of the table. Don't stop over here. They're cheering for the slugs. Don't stop. There's a lot. I see a very happy young man across the table. Oh my gosh, look at that one, you guys. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Stretching out there. Suddenly, he's not liking what he's seeing outside that blue circle. We have bribes of strawberries, fruit, and everything else going on here. Beer. 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 Yeah, beer. They love beer. They like beer. They get drunk off of it. Come on, Steve. Why did he? And suddenly, the big slug is waking up. And we actually have a hitchhiker in the race. The little slug on the big slug. And as you can see, this is not exactly a blazing fast race. Next year we put him in Coca-Cola. I think that's going to be it. Make sure it has caffeine in it, too. That's right. Our slug is completely turned around. He's heading inside. He's going the wrong way. Steve is going into the circle. We have a winner on table one. We have a winner on table one. And it seems like table one always has the fastest slugs, year in and year out. We are at the other end at table three. We've got one young man over there just patiently watching his slug, who appears who appears to uh, have woken up and is heading somewhat in the right direction. All of these guys kind of meandering towards the edge. Parent winner before is now turning around. We're gonna get a quick water spray going on the table here. Crowd is a fan of that. This could be a very long race today, folks. Is this what you expected of your slug? No, I did not. Remind me faster. Which one is yours? Point yours out. Okay. He seems to be just kind of rocking back and forth. Yeah. Come on, baby. I can see you.
turning around. More water coming into the rescue. The race is going way too long. Oh, way too slow. Table three coming in at the tail end of the race. Nothing can happen until we get the winner at table three. Oh man! And every year it seems like the uh, the white slugs seem to always the white slugs always seem to uh, be the fastest. Is there a reason? What do you think about that, Rich? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Looks like we've got WWF going on out there. One that looks like it just went to sleep halfway to the finish line. <laughs> We've got the hitchhiker. Looks like he's in the lead. I don't think that slug belongs to anyone. No, that's what he does. Somebody brought the little tiny one. Someone brought the little tiny one. Yeah, somebody over here did. This guy, little guy. Look at him staring intently. Oh, the littlest slug ever is totally winning. It's right here. What are you doing? The little one is doing great. And this will be an epic slug race if the little guy wins. Lots of meandering slugs out there, I must say. But here goes the little guys in action again. Oh, look at them. We've got one very excited mom across the table too. crowd that I've seen in three years. And very shortly here we should have a winner, at least by next Tuesday. Oh and he's rearing 
up his head. He's going to check it out. I think he sees the grass and the Tupperware over there. And the little baby slug seems to be turning around. Not quite sure where he's going to go. Now they're all waking up with that spray of water there. And hopefully you're going to get a good view from our slug's eye view camera that is sitting on the table right at slug level. Gonna win. Looks like the little guy might just do it, but the big guys are catching up. And this is a tough haul for these guys. The crowd is pulling for the little guy, but he looks like he's making a right-hand turn. So there you have it. That was a blazing fast race, not. And we are going to now advance to the finals and see who's going to take home the Slug Championship right here at the Blueberry Festival for 2013. Okay, right here at the finals, the finals have started. This is going to be an amazing race. Front and center, big white slugs. Wake up and go. Come on, Yes, I'm hearing quips by the crowd. This is a veri veritable slug fest. And this certainly is a race for the kids. Very competitive. And we've got a one that is just coming right out in the front right away. Okay, your slug is in the lead, buddy. What do you think? Good. Where did you find your slug? In the back of my yard. The usual suspect, right? Yeah. Look how fat. Did you feed him anything special? Did you promise him any treats if he wins? Come on, B. Come on, B. Come on, B. This is a really fast slug. I believe in you, Arthur. Come on. Some of our fans are expressing some. Uh, they like Arthur. Arthur over there is the big fat one. Thank you. 
And Happy is still in the lead. Come on, Arthur. He's shaking. I believe you. Come on, Arthur. I believe you, Arthur. You come on. You got this. Oh, my God. <laughs> you come on, Arthur! Happy! Oh, I believe in you! I still believe in you, Arthur! Come toward the sound of my voice! Come along! Arthur is responding to the cheering on. This is pretty amazing stuff here. The crowd is really into it. Happy is cruising along over there towards the end. Could be the biggest competition that Catch Can has seen in a long time, at least since last Blueberry Festival last August. And I think one of the slugs decided to take a nap. He was tired from the first heat. And it looks like Come on, Arthur. Arthur's trying. Arthur's in there, but Happy is getting right there. Happy, Happy is. And a tentacle may finish this off. It looks like the tentacle is crossing over. I don't know. Have we got a judge's call here? Oh, no. He, oh, he's right there at the finish. And he decides to make a turn. Arthur is now cruising into action. Happy decided to take a right-hand turn at the very last minute. Oh, now it looks like Happy might have done it. There we go. And we have a winner of Slugfest 2013. And we have a winner. Happy. And is that Arthur right there? Happy has won the lottery. Get that? Sharon, you want to hold your slide? Sharon, wow. how do you spell your name? Jay. Give you this. Jay. There you go. Yeah. Where's Arthur? Where's Arthur? Where's Arthur? Yeah. Sharon, you hit them all. Okay, wait. She's got a certificate for you, too. All right. <laughs> Yay! Very nice. He's in fact he's so fast he's gonna fall on the ground here momentarily. Congratulations. How did you pick your slug? How did you pick your slug? And he's holding his hand as far away from his body as possible. You just found it you just felt he was a winner? Yeah, you can pick a winner. All right. Way to go! Nice Come back here. Okay, so let's let's grab an interview with the champ here. You got anything to say for yourself, Mr. B? No, apparently not. Apparently not. So, what what is what is your name? Jaren. All right, and what grade are you in? First grade. First grade. All right. Very cool. So, did you think in your wildest dreams that your slug would win? Yes. You did? You had all the confidence, right? Did you do like any special training or anything? Nope. All right, so you've got to be a proud mom too, right? Oh, I'm so excited. This is fantastic. <laughs> Starts Blueberry off right. Well, congratulations, guys. Yay, thank you. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> Why do the pies look bigger this year? Uh, you know, I think uh, Martin and Cammie got a little ahead of themselves with all these blueberries. They just couldn't control themselves. I mean, th this is going to be as slow as the slug race with the size of these pies. I think so. <laughs> they look divine. I kind of want to uh, sample my one myself. Yeah, they really do. Well, make sure and save uh, two, if possible, ah, for yeah. Stuart and I in our private ah. dueling pie eating contest. Excellent. Hunter 
Hunter's missing out, you know? I saw Hunter, but I gotta have some new prey this year. That's right. I think we ought to get KJ involved. What do y'all think? Oh, there you go. He's right there. I think he'll issue the challenge. <laughs> Let's go see. Okay, Stuart, I, I think that KJ should join in on our, our three-way pie eating duel. What do you think? Oh, not a chance. I bet there's no sugar-free pie. Ah, true. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You guys can play off and I'll... Okay, you judge. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Your fancy iPad. I, love I got my fancy City Hall iPad. We're ready. <laughs> we'll... Are you on official business? Uh, unofficial business. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey business. <laughs> Monkey business. Very cool. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with the age seven and under bracket for the pie eating contest in about five minutes. So make those last minute phone calls, wrangle up your family, say, get your butt down here to the parking lot so we can get started. Age is seven and under in five minutes. You were in this last year, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's your strategy on how, on how to win? Eat. Do you have any? Do you have any special strategy? Uh, no, not really. No? No. You're not gonna try and flip it up over and then gobble it up off the table or anything? Not really. Just eat and eat fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So this could very well be the youngest pie eating participant ever, right? <laughs> Who's the parent here? All right. Great. What is her name? Grace. How old is she? Two. Oh my goodness. And has she been practicing? I mean... No, this is an impromptu. Okay, so are you making her do this or did she say, Mom and Dad, I really want to do the pie eating contest? Anita showed her the pies and now she wants them. <laughs> That's the great. Her Watch her win it all. Adults is the last category. We're two minutes away from the pie eating contest and we already have a person trying to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, that guy over there. Disqualification. Get in with the kids. <laughs> you have to kneel down if you want to <laughs> compete with the kids. <laughs> okay, kids, we're going to get ready here. Everybody gets to put a smock on. And you can't use your hands, remember. No hands, just mouths. And the first one to finish is the big winner. Thanks again to Bar Harbor Restaurant for supplying the delicious blueberry pies for today. Thank you to our organizers, the Arts and Humanities Council, Kathleen White, Anita Maxwell, Marnie Rickleman, and to our judges, KJ Harris and uh, not sure who else is here, but <laughs> that would be you. Well, me, but <laughs> I don't want to thank myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Michelle O'Brien and Jake Schwartz for the lovely film and video coverage today. Thanks again to Bar Harbor Restaurant for the fun of the event. You gotta wait until the Thank you to our organizers. Okay, you're gonna do it, right? You are you look ready. Are you ready? Now you look even more ready. Does everybody have a smock? Does everybody have a pie? Do not eat the pie pan that's made out of aluminum. That probably won't taste very good. You guys all excited? Remember, no hands. You ready to eat? Oh, uh, we have one person who's not ready. Oh, you can't touch it yet. You can't touch it yet. You gotta use your mouth. Ready on three. One, two, three, 
does not work. You gotta just go for it. Get those crumbs. Get those crumbs. Good job. Good job. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Get the last part of that tin. There you go. One more bite. I think we we got a winner over there. We got a winner. Right on, everyone. Good job. Let's see those beautiful faces. to claim their prize. Okay. Where's our winner? Where's our winner down here? Where's our winner? The stuffed cheeks, the stuffed face. There, you are a winner, I think. Come on, we gotta get you your prizes. So come on over to Marnie. Nice job, everyone. <laughs> Go for cheeks. <laughs> All right, so eat it, knead it fast was your strategy and you ended up winning. How do you feel? Good. <laughs> yeah, of course. Way to go. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you had a great strategy, too. I see your uh, brother there. He's pretty happy for you. What is, what is your name? Laurel. Laurel. Well, good job. And uh, you might need a napkin, too, after this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up we've got the 8 to 12 age group, and we need to get some strategies. What, you guys have a special strategy going on here, or what? I don't have a strategy. No strategy? Just eat it, right? How about you? Yes. Tip it over. Yeah, tip it over. Okay, but what I did last time was to win. I flipped it over, and took off the tin, and then just ate it easily. Nice. And so, so did you win last year? All right, last year's champ back at the pie eating table. There you have it. And he's got a strategy that he thinks will be a winner. Remember to wait until we see. Okay. Well, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> a garbage bag. Remember, once again, no hands. Don't eat the pie tin. <laughs> Time for photo opportunities. All right, everybody get ready to go here. One, two, three, go! Oh no, we have an overturned tin. Overturned tin. A couple of overturned tins. Flip it over with your mouth. We got one done already, right down to the end there. The smockless wonder and the deadliest catch. Go on and see Marnie and get your prize. Delicious, delicious pie from Bar Harbor. Okay, so what is your name? Vincent Perro. Am I on TV? Very cool, you will be. Good job on winning. What was your strategy? Uh, my dad always taught me to flip it over and just eat it. Inhale it, right? Right. There you go. Well, good job, man. You got second place. I don't know if we have prizes for second place. We just have prizes for first place. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's get a picture of you with your certificate. Nice job. 
<laughs> All right, very cool. And he takes home the prize T-shirt. Leave your smocks on the table if you want. Next up, we will be. Next up, we'll get into the uh, larger ages. So stay tuned for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, we're gonna have the teenagers next, age 13 through 18. Age 13 through 18, step on up. T Pie, don't be shy. We got one of our runners from the morning. Excellent, excellent. I think Sam is a returning champion. Too. Sam, are you a returning champion? Is that right? Yes. Yes, I am. What year did you win? Last year. Excellent. I know, I can't convince her. All right, teenagers, come on up. Don't be proud. Kneel, stand, crouch down, do a power squat, however you need to do to get up to the table. Alyssa? <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, we gotta remove all jewelry, headbands. Get all prepared in our safety smocks. Does everyone have a pie? <laughs> All right. Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Don't be dainty about it. Don't be shy. There we go. Sam locks it down again. Year two. Good job. Good job, man. You inhaled that thing. How'd that feel? It felt good. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Two years in a row. The champion right here. What is your name? Sam Weston. Well, congratulations, Sam. Time for the adults, ages 19 and up. Age 19 and up, come on down to the table. Yeah, yeah. One minute, like back to back to back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the adults have to finish two whole pies. That's the way it works. This is a competitive eating competition. <laughs> Looks like we have a uh, wardrobe malfunction. Shoulders are too wide for the garbage bag. <laughs> You're wearing the garbage bag kini midriff showing on that one there. Remember, no hands. All right, who needs pies? Does everyone have pies? I think we need two pies over here. Anyone else for age 19 and up? Anyone else need pie? Anyone else need a protective gear? <laughs> All right, looks like we're ready to go here. Three, two, one, go! I'm doing the whole pie in the mouth at once. I like that. That works. Some of you can conquer the entire filling. We got some crumbs there to get. A couple more. I think we got it. We got it over here. I think we got it over here. <laughs> there we go. We got our winner over here. Oh, my goodness. He's wearing it like an art. It's in his eye. Pie in your face. Oh, 
blue. Boy, I, I made you work for it. So is this, Stuart, is this our winner? All right, well congratulations, man. What's your name? I'm Alex. Alex, okay, so you ran the race, now you ate a bunch of pie. Did you have a strategy? Um, I was hungry from the race, so I figured I could use some pie. Oh, I thought maybe your strategy would have been to wear more than you ate. Oh, yeah. it's a good look on me. I think so. <laughs> good job, congratulations. Thank you. Sir, we're calling the two-way tie. All right, right there. We have a two-way tie. Good job. Good job. All right, so what's your what's your name, sir? Uh, Dick. Dick, all right. So uh, you guys were are you here together or just across the table? No, I'm visiting my daughter here from Los Angeles. <laughs> awesome. I have you ever seen lives here? I'm from LA. A so. <laughs> little bit different than LA, would you say? No question about it. Very beautiful here, very folksy. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're having a good time. Maybe you can wipe your face now. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't realize you tied. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Just you. One. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, now we're down for the Stuart and Michelle Duloff. The media Duloff, right? The media Duloff. <laughs> TV versus radio. I love it. I love <laughs> That's great. Okay, buddy. Let's talk strategy. Do you have a strategy? Because I do not. No, me either. No, I'm just, just going to stick my face in it and see what happens. Okay, and the winner gets what? I, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I Bragging got it. Right no, 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 no. Winner gets to buy the, uh, no, gets a free beer from the other one. I like it. At Mike's Elbow Room after we do the Beard and Mustache yes, Contest. there we go. All right, sweet, I like it. Yes, you know what? I compete for beer. Now, I'm, now I've got a strategy. Now I've got a strategy. Hungry, yeah. have the beer. And now, he's waiting, right? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna count you off. Okay. And then he's gonna declare the winner. Okay. Three. Two, one, go! Woo! Okay, I would like a Alaska white later. Okay, fair you enough. You got it. Now, I would like an, a napkin now. <laughs> so, I was told this was a solo show. So I have 45 minutes of material. I hope everybody's okay with that. That's anyway. Freebird. <laughs> a little bit of a backstory. I was born here, and then we moved away when I was 12. And when I thought about writing this song, I tried. It. How do you write a song about blueberries? It's not just describing a blueberry. So I thought when we moved, and I just all I wanted to do was come back home. So I thought about when I was 12 and just missing Ketchikan so much. And though now I want to go off and do great travel and wondrous things. This is, this is the 12 year old me thinking about how much I want to come home. So. And blueberries. Walking down the street in a pair of torn up shoes Wondering aloud why singing out some blues Singing about a place that feels somewhat like home I truly miss the sight of my sweet blueberry moon Treated oh so nicely, been treated kind of rough. But take me back to my love. I will be there soon, back to pretty shorelines and my sweet blueberry moon. All the lovely berries grow out from the ground. The 
smile at the blue sun as it showers down. Their leaves not clothed in raindrops as they stare at the clouds, waiting as they cling to their sweet blueberry moon. So one of the best things about Blueberry are all of the booths. And last year, they opened up two new parking lots because the demand was so great for booths. Now, one of the things that I didn't get to do last year that I'm definitely doing this year is the Ketchikan Middle Medieval and Renaissance Society's jousting. So let's go check it out. This is going to be fun. Anita, this is super cool. You made like, what, 30 extra knives the other night? Uh, well, yeah, these. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, wasn't your goal like four? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's at least a half a dozen, and I just got went crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so give us the scoop on this year's upcoming medieval festival. Well, actually, it will be next February, and we're planning to have the food from Eastern Europe. Ooh. And so it'll be great, and we're hoping to have a special performance. Um, I'm not going to give it away until we have it nailed down, but uh, some guest performers, so uh, it should be really fun. And of course, Joel Kotrick is going to cook for us, so the food will be awesome. Awesome. Okay, so if someone doesn't know, maybe they're new to town, tell me a little bit about your group and how do they get involved? Well, our group is the Ketchikan Medieval and Renaissance Society, and they can just come. We have a monthly meeting on the first Saturday of every month at the Landing Boardroom at 10 o'clock in the morning. We have breakfast and, and talk about medieval stuff. Everything medieval. That's right. All right, well, I am getting ready to go joust. This is going to be very, very interesting. Looking pretty good there. I'm not quite sure if I can do this. I'm still wondering if you can ride it like a bull. Do I prefer a black horse or a white horse? I don't know. Aren't the dark knights supposed to be much more professional? Mm. But the white guys... They're meaner, that's for sure. I'm going to go on the black one then. Alright. So the adults have to get up and do it themselves? Is that how that works? I don't know, my, my jeans might be too tight. I may not even be able to... Woo! Yeah, woo! Oh. <laughs> Whoops, wrong rodeo! How's this, okay, how's this work? Okay, you hold this, Uh huh. aim for the orange target. Oh my god, I'm probably gonna fall off. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh. Yikes! Ah! Yay! Oh, that was super fun! That was super fun! Now you're gonna ride back. Oh my gosh. Watch me, watch me bite the dust on the way back. Hey, Terry. <laughs> 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 
right. So can you like make this competitive and like have people joust each other? Yeah, we usually have two people, one on each horse. No, I mean like joust each other, not just go after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, we don't really have uh, padded holes for that sort of thing. It's all oh, well. I thought I'd check. Okay, see y'all next year. This is awesome. Great idea. Anita. You are forgiven. Okay. No more. No more Wait, can I fit through here with my with my hat on? This is when you have been a very bad, bad night. Very bad, bad night. Fortunately, everything is good at the Blueberry Festival, including the food. I tried the lumpia not too long ago. It rocked. I don't know if I have the exact hairdo that would make this look good, but I've seen some people wearing these around. Tell me about these. Are these real? These are real, and then these ones over here are fake. I just, my do, hands are- Do you have any crowns of thorns? I think I, no, oh, sorry. I don't have any, no, no crowns of thorns, but I did slave away. My hands are like brutally beat up from making them all night. <laughs> oh, you made them all night? Yes. Oh, because they're real, right? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Very cool. Is this your first year at Blueberry? Yes, it is. Very neat. Hey, quick question. If someone wants to get a hold of you to have one of these made afterwards, how do they do that? Um, if they want more, they can just get a hold of me through my email. Okay, and what's that? Uh, Larissa.Otness, O-T-N-E-S-S, -S, at k21schools.org. Nice, very cool. I got maybe try one of these on. Will it fit over my ball cap? Which one matches the best, do you think? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I maybe have too big of a head for this. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. No problem. Have fun. You too. Happy blueberry. What are these? Come to, come explain these. Okay. These are Squid Cthulhu hats. masks. So they're uh, they're octopus tentacles on the front, and it's a ski mask. <laughs> I don't. Well, Should I try one on? Yes, you need to try yeah, one. Yeah. Oh one. no. Okay. Someone's got to take a picture too. Oh take my your lord! Head off. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, you hold this. Wow, oh, that's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Wait, how's this thing? Straight. Just put it on your face. There you go. Put it on your face. There. <laughs> how? How do? Do I look scary? <laughs> I can't see. No, so I was having a bad hair day before this. Now I'm really having a bad hair day. Here, wait. <laughs> okay. Yes, you need one of these. Do they have them at the day spa? Why do I feel like I'm talking through something? You, you are, well, you have a nice hole, see? Now you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, are you out there? <laughs> well, um, I don't have them at the day spa, but I do uh, make them upon request. I just make them as a part of what I do um, to come down from massage all the time. <laughs> so, um, name's Katie Jones. You can search for me on Facebook and I'm happy to make them for people. Sweet. This is like Top Chef Central in here, right here in the Blueberry Crepe booth with Big Brothers Big Sisters. This is super cool. Just left. Oh my gosh. Okay, so give us the scoop. How many hundreds have you sold so far? I have no idea, but it sound feels like a thousand. Well, it looks like your line is about a thousand people deep too. Yeah, we got six on the griddle all the time. Okay, so I got to know the secret. How do you make these? Because I know that I would screw it up. Well, first of all, you have to have the fancy schmancy griddle or crepe cooker all the way from France. And then you make your batter with the secret recipe for Big Brothers Big Sisters crepes booze up booze. <laughs> okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a bunch of fabulous ladies that roll them all up with the blueberries. And I can see Kathy Gucker is on the rolling table here. Let's see. How many, what's the secret to rolling these things? I know. <laughs> She doesn't know. She's rolled so many thousands, she lost track. Show us how it's done. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There you go. We're waiting. Ready, set, go. Oh, uh, Larissa's behind the behind the schedule, right? Here we go. One coming up. Okay. Crepe out. Cool whip on. Powdered sugar. Blueberries in. Roll it up. And powdered sugar. Okay, next one. Okay. Next one. Very cool. You can even do specialty crepes, all yeah, for a good you know, cause. Okay. Yeah, one dollar on the top. Oh, okay. One dollar on the top. Because for Giovanna, it has to have like this. It has to be. 
have presentation. There you go. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Look at the size of these blueberries. Look at this. Oh yeah, let me see that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Ten years you've been gone. Now you're back at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Give us the scoop. What's new? What's changed? Oh, it's exciting. Well, Joanne's done an excellent job of actually really getting the program off the ground and stabilizing Catch Can. Done a great job fundraising and having some long-term matches. It's been really great to watch. We have some people who've graduated high school, gone on to college now, and are still in touch with their big brothers or big sisters. So oh, it's been really, really nice. And as always, I know you probably have some matches that still need to be made. So if definitely, someone, yes. If someone wants to say become a big brother or a big sister how do they do that and more importantly what's the time commitment well it's actually about four hours a month and we ask that people would commit for a year we know that things change but that's what we like to ask they can call 247-3350 or find us on Facebook through um, Big Brother Big Sister of Ketchikan and we have our applications there they fill that out and then we do an interview with them and then after that, um, what we like to do is just find out like what kind of interests they have and then match them up with a child who also has similar interests. And you know, you guys do such an awesome job of that because you've had some matches that have been going on for years and years and years. Yes, we have some that I think of eight to nine years. Like George Beasley has been a match for many, many years and they have a great time together. Um, it's been kind of fun to watch that relationship evolve. And pretty soon, Bailey's going to be graduating high school. So oh, wow. that started way back, probably when he was like third grade, I think. And it's not limited to individuals. So if you want to be a couple, yeah, that's great. Um, actually, uh, Larissa and her husband, they're a couple match, and uh -huh. they go out and do things. So if one of them's um, not in town, then the other one goes out with their little and does things. So okay. that's really fun. High school kids can also do this um, if oh, they want. Really? Yeah, 16 years or older. They can also sign up for the school program. So if you don't want to do the community program, you can um, ask to do the school program, which would last for nine months out of the year and you go to school once a week for an hour a week. Oh, I like that. I totally didn't know that. And that was more of a, you know, on a structure, routine, and then you kind of, if you have a schedule at work where you have your lunch at a certain time, you can just like schedule it in and, and know that one week you're going to go over to, you know, Tonga School of Arts or... And hang out for an hour. Yeah, I like so that. Pretty cool. Very cool. Well, good luck. I mean, the line is... Yeah, it's doing been... really good. This is a great fundraiser. I really thank uh, Susan Welsh. This is her event. She's been doing it for 25 years, and she had asked us if we'd like to um, take part in it, and then we get the proceeds from it. So it's a really good thing. We usually get to make around three thousand dollars from it so we're Excellent. excited our matches are behind there and lots of our long time volunteers came out so thank you very cool thanks happy blueberry thank you okay so tell me about this booth this is a new booth this year right uh, yes it is okay, and cool. we came over from Prince of Wales Island the north end uh, art from uh, Port Projection. We're all well, from Port okay, Protection. so I'm seeing all of this stuff on so here. We that have uh, four solstice. artists. We have four artists here. Judy Magnuson, who's the winner of your guys' Hummingbird uh, People's oh, cool. Choice. And, Very neat. Um, best in show uh, this year. She does her Childs and Prince. And um, Terry Metcalf, who uh, is doing the Solstice. These are neat. Port Projection Solstice Festival. Okay. <laughs> and, I, wait, um, I gotta know about these. Those are Judy Magnuson's also. These are groovy. Those are Judy Magnuson's also. Okay, so what do you use these for? Is this like for when you travel on the airline? <laughs> yeah. No, you get those when then you're That's on there. <laughs> hey, quick! Oh no. That's to uh, look at, I uh, guess, and put in the gaze in one of your familiars. Oh, that's so neat. Isn't it gorgeous? That's so neat. Well, let's see how much it costs. Very talented woman. Okay, so if someone is seeing this after Blueberry and they want to get a hold of you all, she has uh, some cards right there. Okay. Everybody has cards with me. <laughs> so that, okay, means, so. that means you've got to give out your email so everyone can pester you now. All right, and then we have... <laughs> She's like, no, Jeff. I won't do that. We have okay. Jeff, uh, so Jeff Sponic over here on this side. Uh, Those are really cool, too. Master Weaver, and uh, he does a... Uh, um, uh, uh, Hummingbird, I mean, what are those things? Well, those look like they would be great to go in a plant. Let's grab one of these. Okay. Dragonfly pants and dragonfly uh, hangers. And uh, they're really popular at home. And um, anyway, that is his work. And this there's is a really neat. On him, and there's cards there for anybody who want to uh, come by. Okay, so dumb question, but I gotta ask it in case someone doesn't know. Port Protection is on the north side of Prince of Wales Island. The north end of Prince of Wales Island. How many people live there? About 50, counting the cats and dogs. From 50? Yeah. Wow. No road. No road. No road. A uh, boat or uh, float plane. Interesting. Interesting. So tell me, what is your favorite thing about living there? 
um, for that reason that we have the... <laughs> I do not want to be near people. And if anybody wants to get there, they have to really want to get there. Oh, great. Okay. You know? well, so, I like it. Well, how, you, how are you doing so far in the festival? Wonderful. I am like uh, selling. This is mine. I deal with polymer clay. Well, yeah, you talked about everyone but your own. Uh, well, this is mine and I deal with polymer clay. I had they a, are gorgeous. a bunch of ravens and they, they flew the coop. They found <laughs> the ones that I've had. Um, and uh, Cherry is a maker of these goodies. Uh huh. And that's it. We have. Uh, so it looks like you guys have sold a lot so far. Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Judy did, Judy did really well. Um, I'd like to get some more of Jeff's baskets sold for him. Mm -hmm. um, but we have quite an artist uh, colony down at the north end of uh, Prince of Wales. Well, hey, thank you so much. That was awesome. It was really thank nice you. meeting you. Yeah, same here. Thank you. I love your stuff. I saw one of your pieces of work at the Main Street Gallery okay. yesterday. It rocked. Oh, the, it was the really awesome. Nice seats for the apocalypse. Yes, nice okay. seats for the apocalypse. That <laughs> was so cool. So you've kind of got some of the same stuff going on here. Yeah. What is your inspiration for this? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm very inspired by 60s psychedelia and stuff, both the music and the artwork of that era, rock posters, album covers and stuff. Neat. But my big thing is I love random application of paint. Okay. And so I like to do spatter paint or spin art or just somehow randomly get paint on the canvas. And I live with it for a while and look at it and then it inspires something. It's like, oh, I know what kind of figure would go good on this or a symbol. Or okay, so using that explanation specifically up here point to one of these pieces of work and what was the first piece of paint on that canvas and then what evolved from it okay well a good example would be this one and what I started with you can kind of see a little bit of a mesh in there and it's actually the inside of a suitcase the stretchy pocket thing you know and so I sprayed that and I and then I put a milk crate on there and sprayed some of that and uh, lived with it for a while. And then I went, okay, I'm going to put some lace over it. And I actually had to rework them two, three times to get them to blend into each other right. And then, yeah, I slept with them for a while. I knew I probably wanted to do a girl on it. Uh -huh. And waited till I found a good pose in a magazine. And I just kind of stole that and changed her look a bit. And, uh, and then once I got it in there, I went, Okay, she needs some fairy dust, and I toothbrushed that in, and the moon went in last. I realized I needed something to balance her on the other side, but I couldn't quite think of what. And then I realized, oh, you know, a moon would actually fit right in one of those spaces. Oh, it's a gorgeous piece. It really is. Thank so you. So one of the things specifically as we were looking at the piece in the Main Street Gallery was how do you get so much detail? And I'm going to walk over here because... I mean, it, it's just so fine detail. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, just with a very fine brush, I guess. Uh, oh, no way. I, I mean, it looks like almost like a marker. Yeah, no, I, actually, yeah, that's what my first medium was, felt tip marker. Okay. And I, for 20 years, that was my medium. And I've only been doing the paint about six, seven years, but I've just fallen in love with it as a medium. And uh, so for something like that, that came from a drawing, actually. And I blew it up, and then I actually carboned that onto the canvas once I had my background so I could get it exact. Because so Very it was drawn cool. with a pencil first, and that's why it's so finely okay, detailed. Okay. I love it, though. That is really neat. Thank you. Well, thanks for letting us stop by. Oh, absolutely. This is awesome. Happy Blueberry. So you just did this, right? Yeah, I did. I, right. I, did, I did an orca. You did an orca. Yeah, okay. with big teeth. So give me the scoop on what's happened. This is a community-wide art project. Yeah, it's called Catch a Can Under the Sea, and anybody can just paint anything they want on this wonderful canvas, uh, and they're going to hang it all up on the front of the wall of the Arts Council. Oh, neat. And it, like I said, it's more fun than you could have anywhere else doing anything. I mean, it's just great. Oh, very cool. Okay. I think I'll try this. I can get anyone? Yes. You can join the fun. Yeah, get a fresh one if you want. Okay. And we're just painting Pitch Can Underwater. Um, it's a community art project, and we're going to hang it up out front um, when we're all finished. Okay. Diane Nab will come and finalize the whole project for us so we very can Very cool. Uh, hang it I do front. think I will try. Thank you. Okay, what are you painting? Me, I'm painting a happy fish. <laughs> Yet. I could put a hook in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna do a starfish. Who needs what color? 
There we go. And then we'll have someone judge our art, Robert, and say if mine is better or yours. And it'll be this lady right here. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. It looks great. Okay. Go ahead. How high reach? All right. Voila. I'm done. Hey, not looking at mine and cheating. <laughs> you can look at mine. You're cheating. Our judge, is, our judge is leaving the area. You know what? I've got the perfect idea. We'll have the small children judge whose is better, yours or mine. No bribing allowed. Well, first, I want you to guess who, which one's... Um, which one's better of yours? I, that one? And what are you making? I am finishing mine. She's uh, copying me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I guess yes, I'm making a red one. Yes, you could be on TV. I can. Can I say see who's the best? Yeah. Who do you think? Is his better or mine so far? Wait. Um. I'm. I'm waiting for your. All of you are done. Just say we're done, right? Hi, Andy. Oh. Now you're using it. I'm done with this. I'm done with this one. Okay. You guys are done? Ta-da! Okay. So he's got, okay, turn around and, and, okay, so, mine is a pink polka dotted starfish. I like the and pink You should ask him what his is. What's yours? Give him the microphone. Happy fish, swimming right at ya. What's it's, it? Mine's a happy fish and he's swimming right at you. I think um, my first one is that one and my second yes. one's that one. Oh, uh, girl yes, wins. yes. <laughs> and the girls you win go. again. Thank you so much. Okay, what do I do with the paintbrush? <laughs> we have to return the paintbrush. I can't paint the town? No, you cannot paint the town. So, one very cool art project for Ketchikan, Ketchikan being, of course, the most uber cool arts community in all of the world, just my humble opinion, of course. Arts Council always has cool stuff going on, and this is just one of the hundreds of things that they have going on throughout the year. Okay, Gary, this is kind of interesting because you guys are never usually able to do the car show here at Blueberry. This is the first time in a long time, right? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a few years. We, we, were, uh, we were here. Uh, Probably five years ago. Right, right. And that's because Founders Day is always um, this weekend, right? Yeah, it has been conflicting. Yeah. But not this year. Not this year. Okay, yeah. so tell me about the big race. Well, this weekend uh, is the uh, Founders Day of drag racing. It's going to be uh, the 10th and the 11th over in uh, Their Founders Day is on the 7th of August, and they uh, celebrate that every year. So we've been trying to support them uh, with uh, bringing the cars over, having a car show, and uh, doing some drag racing over there. Very cool. Okay, but you guys also have some other stuff going on throughout the year. Saturday night cruises, right? That's right. And if someone wants to go and bring their car and do that, or hang out and maybe ride in someone else's car, where do you guys meet? What time? Give me the whole scoop. Well, every Saturday, uh, if the weather is nice, uh, then we meet at the old uh, Chevrolet dealership parking lot. It's now hometown. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, hometown furnishings. Yeah, hometown right. furnishings. Yeah. So uh, we meet there uh, right around 7 p.m. on Saturdays, uh, every Saturday night. And uh, if they have uh, a car that they enjoy cruising in, bring it out. Uh, you can join us. Uh, if you just want to maybe go for a ride with one of the cars, we could probably help you out with that too. Neat. Neat. Okay. And how does someone, if they're interested in becoming a member of the organization, how do they get in touch with whoever is in charge of that? Uh, I have uh, set up a Facebook account, mm -hmm. and uh, it's Catch Can Cruisers on the Facebook, and uh, we can, they can do that. Contact me through there, okay. and uh, it's a twenty dollar a year membership fee, and then uh, 
That's pretty much it. Nice. So. Okay, so now I gotta ask because it is blueberry and we're in front of a purple car. Yeah. Whose car is it? I know nothing about cars. This is a 1967 uh, El Camino and it's owned by Laurel Bray. And she is the uh, Catch Can Cruisers treasurer slash secretary. And this is very purple. It has a uh, 400 uh, cubic inch uh, Chevrolet small block. And uh, it's a pretty fast car. It's, it's really cool. And I also really see cool. some yeah. purple dice in the uh, windshield there. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I, this is so dumb of me to ask. How do you keep the engine clean? I mean, that's ridiculously clean. Yeah, well, all of the Bray vehicles are He's doing that horn thing to us again. <laughs> ridiculously clean all the time. They take very good care of their vehicles. And, uh, uh, you know, you try to avoid driving your car in the inclement weather, right. in the rain and all that. And that helps a lot. Keep them uh, stored inside. And just uh, it's gorgeous. keep them polished. I love it. <laughs> okay, these are very, very cool. Is this your first time at Blueberry? First time. Really? Yep. Okay, so what prompted you to come to Blueberry? Uh, I just moved here in August, and it was a hobby, and everybody said you should start selling your pictures, so. Very cool. Okay, so tell me about some of these shots that you've got. And I really like this one on the, it, this is metal? Yeah, it's aluminum. Uh-huh. Yep, and uh, this is just based in south, right behind Safeway this winter. Oh, wow. the sunrise. Um, everything here is taken from last August till today. And where did you move from? Originally Montana, but I moved here from Bethel. So. Nice! What brings you to Catch Camp? I'm a dentist. Oh, really? Yeah, I see. Yep. Okay, neat. Yeah. And so, how much time do you spend taking these photos? You've got these calendars too, I see. Yes. Oh, these are neat. Let's take a look at these. Oh, this is great. Which month is your favorite? Show, show me your favorite month. Honestly, it's, it's probably one that's not as popular with everybody else. That is an awesome shot. So if people want to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. and they because this will air after Blueberry is over, how do they do that? Uh, I have a website. Other than having bad teeth. I have a website. <laughs> or uh... Nice. Okay, so you've got a website. I have a website, ryanbuddy.com, and uh, my email, buddydds at gmail.com. Very cool. Well, thanks for letting us uh, stop by. Appreciate it. Keeping this card. <laughs> All right, we're here with Austin Otis, Youth Court member, getting ready to uh, prepare for the big blueberry ball roll. What number, how many years has this been going on? Um, probably since like 2000 or so. so about oh, very cool. And you guys earn how much money from this? Uh, probably around seven or $8,000 at the most. Right, and so that money goes towards what? Uh, funding of the youth court, uh, us going to conferences, pretty much just the functioning of all, youth, uh, all of youth court's functions. All right, so if someone doesn't know about youth court, give a quick synopsis of what, what it's all about. Uh, we help first-time offenders as a restorative justice system. Uh, we help people that get misdemeanors back into the community and they can be d dismissed off the record, the, the crime that they've committed. Okay, excellent. And if a kid wants to be involved in youth court, how old do they have to be? Uh, they have to be in sixth grade, uh, fifth, sometimes fifth grade, and then uh, they just take a couple week uh, class taught by uh, Trevor Stevens, the judge, um, and once that happens, they take a bar exam, and after that, they can be a member of youth court. Sweet! Okay, so how many balls did you sell today? Um, I don't know the number, but I know we reached more than last year, probably about 900 balls. I've got number 1047, oh, and there she's go. got 1051. So I, 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 I haven't been here all day, so that's probably. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Well, you can just give up. Oh, we've got Brita over there, our uh, former celebrity chef star, with number 1051. But I'm here to tell you, girlfriend, I've got 1047, and that is the winning ball number. If you win, I'll split it with you. Bye, bye. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, no deal there, girlfriend. <laughs> all right. So in a few short minutes, the balls will be rolling, and just so you know, KPU has a little bit of a different take on it this year because we've installed a GoPro 
camera at the shoot where the winning balls go in and it has a very cool view. We are also putting a GoPro at the top where they're going to dump the balls. So we should have the blueberry true blue view of every ball going down the hill. This is perhaps one of the biggest, most famous events of all the Blueberry Festival. So uh, stay tuned and the balls will be off in just a few short minutes. <laughs> and the balls are off and here they come rapidly coming our way we got some bouncers and they're stacking up and there goes the winning number right in the chute pretty cool stuff and we've got some big bouncers again this year and as always, some of them get out of the chute. None as of yet have nailed. Oh, one almost got Jacob the camera dude for the second year in a row. And here comes in another one incoming. And right there, Jacob. Oh, that one could have been in your living room if you were lucky. And here comes another big one. And people are just bouncing the blueberries down the chute this year on their own. And we should have a winner soon. Top prize, Austin, is what? Uh, $1,000 in cash. $1,000 in cash to that winning ball. And, 97. and the winning number is 97. Number 97 is the winning number. You get $1,000 if you have number 97. Congratulations. Hey, on another great year, Austin. You guys have a great program. Oh, that, man, that one almost nailed me, too. Great job, and up next will be the famous beard and mustache contest. Always great fun over at Mike's Elbow Room. Michelle, you almost got it. We need one more. We need one more in there. All right, second place is number 980. Third place, number 57. Number one, 97. Number two, number 980. And number three, 57. Another awesome blueberry roll, and we'll see you up next at the Beard and Mustache Show. This was a better ball roll you felt this year, why? It was a denser pack. I think it's more fun to watch them come down as a mass. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, and I mean, I'm look at all these balls, they're everywhere. How many do you lose every year? We sold, we don't have the final count on total sales, but slightly over a thousand, and we usually get them all back but for 30 or so. It's amazing. Really? For days afterwards, people come into the office and say, I found this, it's yours. Hey, it's just like the Rotary Duck Race, man. <laughs> we found ducks up. weeks afterwards. Well, great, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, appreciate the support from everyone. We have most artistic, wild man, <laughs> and people's choice, so the crowd gets to vote on that one. There's also an honorable mention. All of our contestants, so three, three winners will win t-shirts. Additionally, the wild man will win himself a uh, can of Barbasol shaving cream. <laughs> Because you gotta shave that stuff off, Jesse, that's why. <laughs> also, the most uh, artistic will win a uh, bottle of mustache and beard elixir by Aqua Belva. Uh, and uh, one lucky duck will also win a halibut fishing trip for two from Baranoff Skiff Excursions, and that can go to any one of the three categories. So. We're going to get some of our contestants going up here, and who, if you would, come come towards the uh, I'm right here. back room here, towards the Wii and the dartboard, if you're planning to compete. Okay. He's one of the haircut customers today. And we'll have you uh, do a walk and demonstrate your beards and mustache skills for the judges as well. We've got the blue bearded man with the curly mustache, the sinister mustache. <laughs> it's very nice. I like it. Yep, yep, yep. We've got someone who apparently just came out of the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Holy diver. <laughs> Holy diver? I love it. we got uh, someone looking very uh, Greek, Greek god with some ivy here going on. 
Come on, don't be shy, don't be bashful. So, uh, who all is here to com who all is going to compete here? Let's see, let's see. All right. All right. So let me uh, pass the microphones around and you guys can uh, introduce yourselves quickly. Are you competing? Richard Cowie. Richard Cowie? And how long did it take you to grow your beard, sir? I don't know. I haven't shaved in about three years. In about three years you haven't shaved. Okay. You, sir? Yes. J.S. Fisk. Hi, Misty. Hi, Adam. Hi, Avery. Hi, <laughs> Chanel. Hi, uh, Aurora. <laughs> All right. And you, sir? <laughs> Jeremy Wills. And uh, what is your inspiration for this beard here? What, what do you got going on? Uh, this is my wife's concoction. I just did all the growing. <laughs> you got uh, beads and seashells in here. I love it. Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jesse, right? Yep, yep, yep. That's me. I'm here. Present. Hello. Present. You got a very clean cut, tight beard. How long have you been growing it? I didn't it? even know I was going to come here, but my friend was like, hey, there's a beard competition going on. You might as well be a spectator. And now I'm just showing up. Hey, so <laughs> present. <laughs> all right. And the blue man. Todd Dooley. It's been about six months I've been going this, so. Mr. Jax. Yep. I'm up, I'm, I'm Elliot, and I've been uh, growing this for about six, seven months, somewhere around there. And you are you are specifically on the mustache side of things here, and I, I love it. The four curly cues looking good. Who else, who else do we have here? <laughs> Catfish, been growing it since October. Since, since October, so uh, about nine months. Do you, sir? Yeah, Doug Perry here, and uh, I'm going for the hat trick. I won. Like, <laughs> going for the hat trick. So you've won the last two years. Okay. Okay. And I remember you from the last time I emceed this. You were one of the com com competitors. Uh, these are all my favorite people, so they're my choice. Excellent, excellent. So what is the choice? What is the trick to winning three years in a row? What do you think? Oh, well, uh, Viagra, no, that's the other thing. Uh, uh, I drink lots of Jack Daniels in a group. <laughs> the man with the ivy. Oh, you're losing your, your leaves. Mm. Hi, my name's Jason. Uh, these are my blueberry beard extensions. Uh, <laughs> been growing this since April. Excellent. So about uh, three months. And another just a plain uh, nice stash, sir. Yeah, I'm uh, Jason as well. And uh, I've been growing it since January. Okay. And you, sir? Nolan Hooker. Been going for about a year and a half. All right. Mr. Webb. Uh, Elijah Webb. There was uh, no shave November, then December beard, and then January. <laughs> and then it just, uh, yeah, sh stopped shaving after that. So, yeah. Excellent. I love it. Anyone else? Anyone else? I think that's our that's our crew of competitors. All right, a nice crowd. Now I'm. Uh, I think we need to have you guys uh, model for the for the crowd here. Yeah, so you want them to strut? Okay. So let's have some folks just strut our stuff. And why don't we start right here? Oh, good. Go, baby. <laughs> With the wildest man. Well, you're in the back, so we'll make sure you get done first and come right on through. That's what she said. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, judges want to be, need to be closer. Judges, you need to be closer, okay. Let me get rid of this. It's like two I'm just kidding. I'll have to go in the corner rather than stand over there. Sure. Nice. Love this. Yeah. Take a strut for us. Woo! Everybody, let's hear some noise. Oh, is he getting lost in the crowd? <laughs> All right. All right, and uh, Mr. Bluebeard. <laughs> Mr. Bluebeard, show us what you got. <laughs> and please, sir, model the wonderful seashells and beads. 
the aquatic beard. No, not, not you, Jesse. Come, come on, Jesse, come on. You can do it. Okay, we can do that. And our hat trick, please present yourself to the judges. And you are Doug Barry Perry. Doug Perry, going for three years in a row, People's Choice. <laughs> Elliot Jacks. Catfish. Catfish. All right, Catfish, take a walk for us. The blueberry beard extension. Oh, he's passing out his leaves, trying to win favors. Actual blue beard, blueberries. And the man with the beautiful stash, come on in. Show us it to the judges. Look at that smile. <laughs> Model for the crowd, please. Good sir, with the long locks, the long blonde locks. Yeah, you can touch it. It's like a mane. It's a beautiful mane. Matches his hair so wonderfully. It's like a lion. Majestic. Catfish is trying to win some extra points. Mr. Webb. Fantastic. And that's quite a, is that a waxed mustache? That is a waxed mustache. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. A million dollar smile. Now judges, do you need to take another look at anyone? If we could have all our competitors line up again, right in front of the judges. Here already. It's nice to Hey, what got you again? coming out. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it far away. Oh, yeah, wow. no, great for coming out, and it's really good to see you are all so handsome. Yes. yes. And I uh, really love the stashes and the beards. My there. grandma told me that this morning. <laughs> but I love it's, that one. it's a great extension of your personalities, and that's right on you guys. So this is fun, and so do you guys want to huddle? Is there any? Are there any of our contestants that would like to give any uh, last minute thoughts on their process or? Thanks for touching. Curry any favors yeah. with the judges? Thanks for touching. I appreciate it. He <laughs> likes to be pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think our weird things happen in the winter when you're bored. <laughs> rock the rock, baby. All right. I think our judges are going to confer. So everybody, uh, feel free to have some drinks and uh, relax for a few more minutes, and we'll announce some winners in just a bit. 
Stewart, record-breaking beard crowd. Right. Say that ten times fast. Record-breaking beard crowd. Record-breaking beard. I, I'm already messed <laughs> up. I'm already There's too many people in here. It's like a sauna. But Mike just gave me the official count. Last yeah. year there were 12 competitors. Okay. And this year there's way more. Yeah. And I think they're wilder too. What do you I think? think? Yeah, I think so. Some of them are a lot more creative. I'm certainly liking it. And from the last time when I emceed, it's at least double the number I think. And yeah, it's a great. It's great to see that this is just growing by leaps and bounds. Well, you know, I think we're actually. They they all have interesting personalities this year too because I'm I'm thinking that we're gonna have to go bleep 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 bleep. bleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, noticed there might be some editing for you guys in the long run there. Definitely. June post, but uh, I wouldn't want to be a judge and these ladies are over here conferring. So when we come back in a minute, we'll have the winner of the first category. That's right. And then I have to pay you your due that you're due on your bet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gladly so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's been fun. Stay Excellent. tuned. Thank you. So a reminder, we have the Wild Man category. We have Most Artistic. We have a People's Choice Award, which we'll be calling on the crowd to vote for. And then we have the Judge's Choice, which is going to win the uh, Hell of a Trip. So let's start with the uh, Wild Man. Wild man who's gonna win a t-shirt and some Barbasol. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. T-shirt and some Barbasol. And the winner of the Wild Man is Mr. Jason Palmer. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, okay. Jason Palmer, Mr. Palmer. Right. Uh, and right. the berries are delicious, folks. Thank I you. tried one. Yeah. They are epic. <laughs> Oh, the oh, the oh, oh, Bring the benefits of your There we go. Yeah, there's some t-shirts. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Good job, man. Good There you go. All right. All right. All right. All right. There we go. Any thoughts for the crowd? Thank you. Any thoughts for the crowd as you win your prize? My beard is delicious. <laughs> I love it. It is. You can serve us all with your blueberries. Oh, thank, thank you so much. All right, the next one is most uh, artistic, best artistic presentation. There might be two on here. And where's our uh, where's our shell man? Shells and beads. <laughs> Jeremy Wills, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and we have a can of the certificate for you, of course. Sister, magical mustache and beard elixir. <laughs> and a T-shirt. Any thoughts from you? Uh, I'd just like to thank my wife for putting this little concoction together. <laughs> I just I just did the growing, she did all the artistic stuff, so. Nice! A team effort, I love it. Alright, next we have the uh, People's Choice Award. So that's relying on the crowd. And crowd. Me! <laughs> no, it's not gonna be you, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have a beard. So I'm gonna put my hand up and it's by applause, of course, over everyone's head. First up, going for the hat trick. Yay! Doug! Yeah. Doug Perry! You did it! Now the next with the high end tight. Jesse? What? No, no. Now with the lion's mane of beauty. Yeah. Roar. I've never been called high as my mouth. Catfish. Catfish, man, support your local water! Now the mustache trio. Number one. Remind me your name again. Jason. Jason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mr. Jax with the quad curl. I love the quad curl. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Webb. Yeah. 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 
Bluebeard. We can't forget about you, Bluebeard. And one last competitor. Mr. Stuart White here, coming at you. Not me. <laughs> no, it's you, my friend. <laughs> Representing the 211 crew. Oh, Today. Oh, and you as well. A haircut. Richard Kelly. Yeah. Richard Kelly. Yeah. Well, I think it's um, it's Bluebeard. I think by a landslide, it's Bluebeard. So here's your certificate. There you go. And a T-shirt. Any last thoughts? Thank you guys. Thanks for all the support. We love it. <laughs> and our last category is the judge's choice. If I can find that certificate. And this is the uh, halibut fishing for two, courtesy of the Alaska Fish House and Baranoff Skiff Excursions. What's the name? We're not really sure. We're not really sure of the name. What is it? It's the quad curl. It's the quad curl. Elliot. Elliot Jacks. <laughs> Thank you. What do you think? Uh, I'm stunned. I'm. I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we're all this guy stunned. shaves Woo! all of us. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for participating. Have some fun. So enjoy some drinks here at Mike's. Thank you to Mike's for hosting once again. Thank you to our judges, Nicole, Michelle, and Marjorie. And thank you to Jake and Michelle from KPU as well for the filming.